All right, folks, welcome to the Ken Coleman Show, coming to you from our Ramsey Solutions studios in Nashville. And we are here to help you discover and do what you were born to do. You have greatness in you. There is an impact. There is a role that the world needs from you. It's just that simple. That means you are incredibly valuable. You are needed and you must do it. You got to show up. I mean, this is, listen, I want you to make as much money as possible. I'm all about the fatter paycheck here at the Ken Coleman Show. But I'm also about you having an extraordinary impact, income and impact, paycheck and purpose. 844-747-2577 is the phone number. If you need some encouragement today, yeah, you need some, uh, just a pick me up. You know, we give a lot of advice on the show. But I can also tell you that some of you just need to call in and say, hey, this is how I'm feeling. Help me with this. We need to talk about those feelings, too. You know, I can I'm just this happened to me and this is where I'm at. I'm just down. I'm discouraged. Can you help? You know, it doesn't always have to be a question, a specific advice. If you just go and Ken, I'm dealing with discouragement right now. and I, I need some help. Call me. Hey, Ken, I'm dealing with some major self-doubt. Call me. Hey, Ken, I, uh, man, I, my, my pride is all up inside of me right now, and I, I just won't ask for help. I'm, I'm worried about what everybody's going to think. I, I need to walk through this. Can I tell you something? I, I've got just as much juice for those calls as I do the, hey, I want to get here. How do I get there? That's a big part of this. So ask away. 844-747-2577. Let's go to Gastonia. North. I tell you what, no, I, I, I take that back. I take that back. I, I want to teach for a second. I want to teach. Um, we'll get to the phone. Uh, but, I, but I want to teach on something. We, we actually put out a post recently on Instagram and did really, really well. And it's very tactical. So I thought, you know what? Let's just share it. So seven questions, because I love questions. And I want to give these to you. For those of you who are in this Get clear stage, stage one of the seven stages. You're just not quite sure, or maybe you got some ideas, but you're looking for that concrete clarity. Here are seven questions that if you ask, it's going to begin to reveal and reinforce what you're feeling. Here we go. First of all, what did you enjoy doing as a kid? Don't underestimate, don't devalue some of the hobbies, some of the things that really commanded your passion as a kid. Now, it's not a guarantee that there's a direct connection, but it is very possible, very possible for some of you that an activity, a topic, an area of interest that consumed a lot of your time as a kid, that that's still in you. You're not all of a sudden a different human being. Look into that. What did you enjoy doing as a kid? Number two. Who's your favorite character in your favorite book or maybe a movie? I love this one. Why do you why are you attracted to that character in that book or in the movie or television show? What draws you to them? What does that tell you about yourself? That's the exercise there. Number three, what's holding you back? You just look in your life and you just ask yourself, what's holding me back? What's holding me back? There might be great purpose in overcoming that challenge to where you do it for someone else. Uh, number four, are you, are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to sacrifice time, money, all the things in order to do something and live on purpose? Number five, what's your picture of a fulfilled life? It's almost like you got a blank canvas. Paint it. What does a fulfilled life look for look like for you? Number six, what would happen if you stayed on the sidelines of life? You just stayed on the bench. You never got out and played. What would it look like? How do you think you would end up? And number seven, look into what I teach is the sweet spot here and get clear. What's your sweet spot? The intersection of your talent, passion, and mission. What are your top talents? What are your top passions? What's that primary missional driver that drives you to work? Talent, passion, mission. Where do they intersect? What's that sweet spot look like for you? Get Clear Career Assessment will help you answer that in 20 minutes or less at KenColvin.com. It's why I created the assessment. 
because you need to have a tool that asks you all the questions and just allows you to be honest. We formulate it, tabulate it, give you a detailed report, fill out your purpose statement, and then show you all the professional possibilities that will allow you to finally get clear. It's the Get Clear Career Assessment. Thousands and thousands and thousands have taken it. It will illuminate. It will inspire. It will create conversation. It will allow you to fully discover who you are. Go check it out, KenColeman.com. Because this concept of purpose, my why, it matters. Absent of fulfilling purpose, in your relational life and professional life. Keep in mind, I have purpose as a husband. I've got purpose as a father. I've got purpose as a son. I've got purpose as a brother. I've got purpose as a teammate. I've got purpose as a human. That's the relational roles where I have purpose. On the professional side, I have purpose as well as a content creator, as a broadcaster, as a coach, as a counselor, as a cheerleader. See how all those come together? But if I had clear purpose in my relational life, as I listed those roles out moments ago, but I could not tell you what my purpose was as my professional life, here's where this gets to be really, really damaging. Okay? I've got clear purpose in my relational life. I know my role. Don't know my role professional life. And I begin to wonder, why? Am I not good enough over here? I long for something. I don't know what it is. It begins to turn into a soul ache. I start to get down, discouraged, depressed. Because my lack of meaningful work means I start to wonder if I matter much. Ooh, it gets dangerous. So now I've got this ache in my soul, this hole in my soul, because I don't experience much meaning at all in my work. And I spend more time at work than I do at home. Watch what happens. It becomes a snowball of negativity and discontent and discouragement and depression. And you're telling me you turn that off after you've been rolling around in that all day long? No, you go home with all that crap on you. And you wonder why you kick the dog or you yell at the kids or whatever you do or you're short with your wife and you can't find any romance at home because you're so focused. You're carrying all that stuff with you. Now let's flip it. You know your relational role. Plural. You know your roles, but you begin to see your role professionally and you begin to see it and you begin to do it. You begin to experience that meaning and that significance and that contribution. And you walk home, shoulders back, chin up, eyes blinking with delight because you've done something that matters to you. You take that home with you. You're a different human. This is the Ken Coleman Show. The Ken Coleman Show continues to give encouragement, principles that will equip you to actually be who you want to be, the best version of you. And then we're going to cheer you on. You know, at the end of the day, I think sometimes when we're asking for advice, I think really what we're asking for is, do you believe in me? Do you think I got what it takes? And, and, and so I can equip, 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 and and, and going to continue to do so and pour myself into equipping. But I got to tell you, the encouraging part is life giving. Uh, I need it. You need it. We all need it. So if you just need to be encouraged today, doesn't have to be an advice question. You just, hey Ken, I'm struggling with this. Um, come on. Being vulnerable like that uh, is what leads to being restored 
and being uh, lifted so that you can keep on going. 844-747-2577 is the number to jump in for your question or if you just need some encouragement. Taylor starts us off this segment in Gastonia, North Carolina. Taylor, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thanks so much for speaking with me today and for your encouraging lessons. I'm a regular listener. Oh, thank you so much. How can I help you? Uh, Yes. So um, to sum it up, I've gotten an opportunity, a job offer to get my foot in the door in the field that where my passion is and where I'm clear at. But um, in the beginning, it will be a slight pay cut. And with student loans starting again, probably in uh, January, assuming they're not paused again. I was just wondering, it, you know, is it worth it do you, in your eyes to, mm. you yeah. know, get where I'm clear, where I'm more passionate? Um, How long? I, I do see more growth opportunity there. Too. You do? You do see more? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, and I'm assuming that includes financially. Yes. So how long? That becomes, I think, the first question we got to look at. How long? So you take a pay cut. Uh, Mm -hmm. And again, you may not know this, but what do you think? Ballpark figure before you feel like, all right, I'm going to get back to at least where I am now or surpass it. Um, I did ask and uh, my manager said that they plan within the first quarter of next year. And I Googled what that meant and it said March. So some months. If that were were to be true, Mm -hmm. could you absorb this pay cut for that amount of time? Um, I believe so, yes. And um, with there still being a a good amount of money to come in to at least cover my bills, um, even if it's a pay cut, I don't feel like it will be fatal necessarily. Yeah, well, I wondering if it's a good decision. It's a good decision. It's a good decision if it truly does get you on the right ladder Mm -hmm. and. And, and not just get you on the right ladder, but it's going to allow you to climb the ladder because I don't think right. it's the only place for you to go. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's like it's if it, it meaning it's not the only way for you to get to the dream job. Right. It's not the only way. So it now comes down to is it the best way? Is it the best time? And mm-hmm. again, I think the best way That's up for you to decide. It's hard for me to say that, you know, but if you go, it's a really darn good ladder, Ken. I mean, I I think it's the right ladder. Uh, The pay thing is kind of a, uh, and so then it comes down to if it's a pure financial decision, if you can make some changes, tighten your budget, uh, work a second job on the weekends, if if needed, to where you aren't struggling. I don't want Mm -hmm. you to struggle because I think it's a myth that you can struggle financially and really give your all. Yeah. I was uh, thinking the same and not wanting to build resentment either. You know, that's right. New places, that's if right. I'm feeling that way. That's right. So your mindset's got to be, not only I can do it financially, but I'm willing to do it. And you got to remember that. So you get in there in two months of taking a lower paycheck and you go, good grief. And what if March rolls around and they don't, th- th- that pay increase isn't there right away. You know, you right. got to also say, how long am I willing to wait? I'll give it six months. I'm not going to give it nine. I'm not saying that's what it needs to be, but I think you yeah. also go into it going, I, it's not a big risk, right? You're young uh-huh. enough. You're early enough in your career. You were very clear. You know what you mm-hmm. want to do. And this is part of getting qualified is taking this position, I'm guessing, to really step into the dream job down the road. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I just think you ask yourself, what do I need to do to where I'm not struggling financially? That's the first question. Mm-hmm. Second question is, is how will, long am I willing to, to pay it forward and invest and show them that I've got it. How long am I willing to wait for that pay bump, which gets me back to where I am? Right. Okay. Yeah. I think. Thanks if, so much. That's yeah, very you, helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Well, great. Because that listen, simplifying what seems like a complex decision is the, always the process. And what we did is we just simplified it to two questions. Get those answers. And now you decide. Do I want to do it? 844-747-2577-844-747-2577. Uh, Asheville, we're going to stay in North Carolina. Go over to Asheville. Oh, I love, love the Grove Park Inn in Asheville, North Carolina. One of Stacy and I's favorite places to go. Amanda joins us there. Amanda, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. 
Ken, hi. Thank you so much. You bet. I appreciate your wisdom and your time today. Thank you. Super excited and super nervous, and I will check out that place you just mentioned. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I just moved from New York to North Carolina, oh. so I still have a lot of exploring to do. Oh, Amanda, save up some money and go get yourself a massage at the spa at the Grove Park Inn. You will thank me for that for decades. It's so good. All right. All right. Definitely will. Thank you. Yeah, what's up? Okay, so... I am currently employed. I was able to keep my job from New York, so I'm working remotely. Mm -hmm. However, I put in my resignation, um, and my boss counter offered to keep me on until January. That was due to burnout. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, do I take time off to reset? Because I know I just need a little time to regroup. However, I've been working since 14, so I don't really know what that is. Um, or do I get another temp job in January and work towards continuing ed into wellness accountability coaching, like getting those credentials? <laughs> Interesting. Financially, could you take some time off without working at all? I could up to three months. I don't think, well, I would get stir crazy. I feel like I would want to just kind of jump into something new. Okay. Well, hold on um, a second. That's, that's probably but, why. <laughs> but that's different than financially. So what's the financial right. length of time that you could go without making any money? Any money? I mean, I wouldn't go over three months. Okay, great. So that's one yeah. That's one frame that we've mm -hmm. got to kind of look at. And then we also know you're going to go stir crazy because you're an active person. You like to do active things. Yeah. Um, and so we know that after a certain amount of time, you're just going to feel the urge to do something. Then the third issue is we know that there is a very clear dream seems like you're headed towards with this, uh, health and wellness position. So you've, you've got some continuing education, which is going to cost you how much and take how long to get you qualified. That's probably going to take me about, um, six months and $3,500 out of my pocket. Okay. You already have that saved up? Um, well, yes, but if I'm unemployed, then that money is going to go straight to the coaching certificate. Yeah. What's causing, so, yeah. So real quick, uh, what's causing the burnout? Burnout is I've been in position for nine years. Um, it's sales focused. I'm in a dual role account management and underwriting in the commercial insurance industry. And I heard you before the ache is real. And as much as I love the company and the team that I've worked with, my heart is being called to service, but yeah. I know with that, there's going to be a change, you yeah. know, financially. And cause I'm, this is a huge change. For well, me. so here's my deal. I don't think you're afraid beyond where you just need like six months of not doing anything. I don't think it's that bad. I think it's real, mm -hmm. but it's not that bad. You're tough enough mm -hmm. and you've got a dream and a vision. So my advice is somewhere in this range. I would work a part-time job or two, maybe in the wellness space, maybe even at the spa at Grove Park. I don't know. You know the space you want to be in. Is there a part-time job or a full-time job that's hourly that brings in enough money to take care of the bills? You don't have to touch your savings and you can pay the $3,500 outright six months from now. You're trained and ready to go to step into this new career. So, you know, that's what I think. I think you just, you enough downtime is you just doing some work you enjoy that's on a part-time or contract level basis. Um, ideally in the field you want to be in, but if you can't find it, just go serve people, go love people in a, in a nice job and just relax and just love on people. No stress, not selling something you don't care about. I think that's the play. And six months from now, you're qualified to get after the thing you want to do. Oh, Amanda, I love this. It's very exciting. Keep moving forward. Don't you dare quit. Really proud of you. Thanks for the call. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Helping you get unstuck so that you can live and work on purpose. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Excited to have you with us. It is a free phone call for you to jump in if you've got a question you want some insight on, or how about you just need to be encouraged. We'll change your name and your location. You just call and say, hey, Ken, I'm just, I'm feeling depressed over this. I need perspective. I've been rejected. I've been treated wrongly. How do I, how do I, how do I get out of bed before I even can get going? We're taking those questions as well, 844-747-2577. But first, 
So you've heard me talk a lot, a lot, a lot, and I'm not going to stop about the true ROI, return on investment is what that means, of a college education. But there's a new study out. Let's look at it in the news. Yahoo News headline, 28% of degree programs leave students financially worse off than before college. Is college worth it? A new report from the Foundation for Research on Equal Opportunity. The study looks at the return on investment or how much more a student can expect to make in his or her lifetime after graduating from close to 30,000 U.S. bachelor's programs. So they did a deep dive. Uh, now, there are clearly some majors, for instance, like engineering, where 95% of students can expect to make more than 80000 by mid-career. Uh, but that's not one of the ones in the 28%. The worst offenders, only 1% of psychology grads will earn more than $80,000 a year by the time they're 35. Whoa. And odds are not much better for those in education and the arts. So the cost of the education and then the job opportunities, the career options, if you will, in those areas, and again, they single out three major categories. One, psychology. Two, education. And three, the arts. That's a problem. And I got to thinking about this. If the median salary in the United States is sixty thousand dollars for teachers, so you got a lot that are obviously way less than sixty, okay. And they love educating, they love instructing, they love teaching, and they're not going to go. You know, the public school, private school options aren't going to offer them huge, you know, increase in pay. How, what do they do with that? And it got me to thinking. We are moving increasingly faster to the online education model outside of the traditional college experience. Corporate training, 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 consulting, training, whatever, all of that, that's instructing. And, and if I'm a teacher and I love the preparation of content, I love delivering the content, I love helping people grasp and utilize and win with that content, I think there's going to be a lot of corporate options, some non-traditional education options where you can make really good money, maybe even on your own. You know, what's keeping a, 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 a public school teacher, private school teacher from starting a training business based on a program uh, or developing their own thing and just going and doing it? The barrier for entry there is not what it once was. It's fascinating information. So anyway, the big takeaway, I think, from this study is, is that, you know, look, it, 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 if you're thinking about college, you better think really long and hard about the major. What is the upside of the major? Not just, you know, throw out all college. I would never say that. I mean, there are certain degrees um, that you have to have in order to do the thing you want to do. But if you're just kind of going, well, I'm just kind of thinking, I think more and more and more parents, you need to be getting the Get Clear Career Assessment that I've got for your students. Let them take it as a senior. It's a great conversation starter. Do your homework. What major are they choosing? Are they choosing it for passion or are they just going, well, I think it's a good career? It might not be. So very interesting stuff. Really interesting. 844-747-2577 is the number. Let's go to Fort Worth, Texas, where Carrie joins us. Carrie, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Hi, Carrie. What's going on? Um, so I'm really, I guess, needing some help finding some clarity, but, um, so I've been, uh, with my job for a little over 10 years. Um, I went to school online. I got my bachelor's in business and, um, I'm at a point in my life where I'm making really good money. And the last couple positions I've held at work, I was really excited about getting, I thought that that was my dream. I thought I was really excited about it. And I got into both of them. And it was just kind of revealing that that really wasn't my dream. And so I'm really at a point where I'm kind of trying to figure out what is the next step? Is this worth like seeing out the next 30 years? How do I really know like what my dream is? And I'm afraid to take any next steps at this point because I don't know if I'm going to feel the same way in the next choice I make. Well, okay. So that's the barrier right there. 
It's like we got two things going on. What changed in this current situation to where you're going, oh, it, could this happen again? And I think, I to me, I think it's about growth. I think it's about new challenge. I think it's about perspective to where that won't happen again if you're really doing the thing you love. So the question is, do you feel like you ever really were in the dream job? And then if you were, what changed? If you really honestly look at that. Yeah, so um, for me, it was kind of just like, staying seated for so long, just not really, you know, getting up and about and moving. I think that that was kind of yeah. um, one of the factors and kind of also the whole, you know, pandemic's really affected everybody, but being stuck at home yeah. and just, um, I don't know, I guess really getting into the actual details of the work, it was just not really, I guess what my mind had set it up to be. So right. it kind so, of changed for me once it was revealed. Okay, great. So that holds with what I teach, correct? Mm-hmm. That you don't have any passion. You don't love the work. And not only do you not love the work, you probably aren't really fired up about the result of the work either. True or false? Oh, so true. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to just, instead of just simply answering you, I wanted you to walk through it yourself. So the answer now to your question is, you don't have to worry about that happening in the future if you're in your sweet spot. And you can grow and your sweet spot move with you. You can advance up the ladder and do new things, new challenges. But again, we're always measuring the new opportunity, the new challenge by this. Does it allow me to spend 75% of my day doing work I'm good at? Does it allow me to spend 75% of my day doing work I really love and enjoy? Does it allow me to spend 75% of my day creating results that actually matter to me? Do you see where I'm going with this? Right. That methodology and get clear and that sweet spot moves with you. Mm-hmm. So I think a couple things going on. Your environment sucked and of no choice of your own, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, right? I think that you got into the work and you go, oh, I don't, I thought it was something I like, but I didn't check it out good enough. See, you, any choosing that you make going forward professionally, any choosing has got to be run through that filter. And now I got to talk to people that are doing it. Maybe shadow them. Spend enough time inquiring, observing to know, oh, will I really enjoy this? The answer is you can figure that out before you make the decision. So it takes away the fear of, oh, gosh, am I going to get into this and realize, wah, wah, wah. you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, so it's not hard for you to make a good choice. You just got to have a way of choosing. I gave it to you. Talent, passion, mission. Go shadow, okay. go examine, do a term paper level inquisition of somebody who's doing that work. And when you find out, that's clarify, your head and heart will verify if it's something you want to do. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So Carrie, look, there is no reason to be afraid that you're going to get into something and then hate it unless you don't do what I just told you to do. But if you clarify and verify... By truly, and maybe you take the Get Clear Career Assessment. I'll give it to you. Would you like to take it? Yes, I would love to. All right, I designed this for you. It's going to do a deep dive on talent, passion, mission. It's going to give you a purpose statement, which now becomes that sweet spot. And you'd measure every opportunity going forward on that. So hang on the line. Amanda's going to give you a code and a link to take it. Get your purpose statement. Read your detailed report on talent, passion, mission. And all of a sudden, it's going to show you your sweet spot and now it becomes the filter for all future decisions thank you for calling me you got this this is the ken coleman show Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, where we help you get clear, get qualified, get connected, get started, get promoted, get the dream job, so you can actually work and live on purpose to give yourself away. Where the money's there, the meaning's there. So what do you need? Some of you just need to be encouraged. Some of you just need to say, hey, this is what I'm feeling right now. I'm I'm moping around. What can I do? 844-747-2577 844-747-2577 is the phone number to jump in. 844-747-2577. I opened up today's show talking about uh, gratitude. We talked about gratitude and it, it keeping you grounded. 
uh, let me tell you something else. Having somebody, whether it's me on the Ken Coleman Show or uh, a good friend in your life, that you, when you can just go to and go, hey, listen, I don't know if this is realistic or not. I just don't know. I, 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 is this real or is this manufactured in my head? This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm feeling. And just somebody that's willing to go, okay, well, where's that coming from? Asking a couple of questions and then kind of giving you some context so that you go, oh, this is real or it's not real and I need to pick myself up and go. 844-747-2577. Please find somebody like that. And then if you can't, call me, change your name, change your location and just get vulnerable with me. 844-747-2577. Let's go to Leah in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Leah, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, how are you? I'm living the dream, Leah. What's going on? Awesome. I need some help. My husband and I have been um, very successful in owning a catering um, company with a restaurant for the last 18 years. We've worked really hard at it. We work a lot of hours. We both have three children as well that we're trying to balance family and work life. And Ken, I'm burnt out. I've been burnt out for the last five years, and but I've always, you know, shown up, shown out, done what I can do. And I'm really trying to get my husband on board with potentially selling. However, it does pay the bills. It provides a really good lifestyle. And although I know he's lost his joy in it as well. He knows that it pays the bills every month. Um, so we don't really have time to dream. We don't have time to really think about the next steps. Because sure you do. Sure you do. <laughs> I know. Do we listen, do that? I know you're exhausted. I get it. Okay, I know you're burning it at both ends. But don't tell me you don't have time to dream. You do. But you guys, okay. th- that's the issue is not time to dream. The issue is, what are we worried that we might have to do if we allow ourselves to dream? That's what I think is going on between one of the two of you, if not both of you. It's real easy to go, well, we're so busy. Mm-hmm. You're, do you know how long it takes to dream? What do you think it takes? How long does it take to dream? <laughs> not long. I guess I do have dreams. I know I you do. do. That's what I want to know. I do. No, no, no. What's yeah, your dream? I do. If let me just say this: if I could wave the can, I need you to be really vulnerable and honest with me over the next few minutes. Okay. If you do, I promise you, we're going to get breakthrough. Do you promise me? Promise. No excuses. Just be honest from your nope. heart. Okay. Okay. If I sold the company for you today, I called somebody and they gave you guys a check for what you would love to get for it, and you guys had money and you had time. And you could just go do it, no risk. And you were guaranteed to succeed at this dream. I know you've been thinking about. What would it be? I would get my master's degree um, in business leadership. And I would um, teach at the college level. Why? I'd always wanted. Um, I've always had a passion for teaching. I remember being a little kid and, mm-hmm. you know, playing school and mm-hmm. just, you know, I, yep. I, I love that age yep. of, you know, I have a senior in high school and I just find that, you know, to take the experience that I have love into that. a great, exciting learning environment for these kids and love it. show them what it means to be successful. Love that's, it. That's really what I'm passionate about. Okay. <laughs> So that was yeah. easier than I thought it was going to be. Fantastic. You're super clear. <laughs> you know what your mountaintop is. What's your yeah. Is your hubs running the business too? Would he do something else? What would he do? He loves um, real estate and development. Okay. How much money would and, you guys stand to clear if you sold this? Have you run the numbers? You talked to anybody that's actually interested in buying it? We have um, before the pandemic, so it's a little bit different now. Not many people, you know, love the idea of food and beverage. Okay. Let me ask you another Um, question. How much would it mm -hmm. cost you guys to get to hire two people to do what you two are doing? That's a great question. I would say collectively between the both of us, Maybe a hundred and twenty five to one hundred and thirty thousand. How much money is this spitting off profit? This is net profit after you guys pay yourself and all expenses. What's it making you guys? About um, prior to the pandemic and going into, you know, kind of recouping the events, we've lost about three hundred and fifty thousand is your net profit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I think yep. it's, I, I got to tell you, I think it's, I think one of the plays for you guys is to at least ease into replacing yourselves part time. What if you cut, how many hours a week do you average working for the company, you personally? Um, I've got myself down to about 30 hours a week. What if you could get it down to 15 and then you actually started on the master's program? You still had your hand in the business. You guys are working on the business, not in the business. If that's if that we if we could do that for you, then Hubs feels like well it pays the bill, so he's less likely to do something else. But I'm going to show you a path for him too. But if you okay. can get down to 15 to 10 hours and you hire well, okay, for this, and I know it's hard, but at the same time, there's people that want to get in this business and learn it, okay. But if you could mm-hmm. replace yourself, and you now have the time and the energy to actually start the master's program. Then you, then if we can expand the business and now we're making more, then you can still pay yourself what you're paying you. But my point is, I would get you down to 15, maybe 10 hours a week to where you're just kind of working on the business and helping the hubs in that standpoint, but you got time and energy to pursue the masters. That's what I would be looking to do. Here's why. As the business gets back to where it was, keeps growing, all of that takes care of the bills, it's security, and then you go get the masters and you step into that space now you're taking care of your side of the income equation for hubs. And maybe we're in a place where he's learned, oh, I can replace myself along the way. You guys keep ownership of it, but it now funds his real estate. And then we decide if we want to sell it or not. I guess to me, I'd be looking mm-hmm. at that path. Mm-hmm. I like that. That feels really good. I, I think that's a conversation you guys need to sit down and have and go, what okay. would need to be true for us to slowly replace ourselves, but we still own it. Okay. See, because you you guys are the relationship. See, you guys will stay the face and the relationship side of the company, but from an execution and logistics side, how would you replace yourself and walk that out? I I just think the exit strategy of selling is not always the best way to go. It's not always the best way to go. Uh, Speaking of the best way to go, for those of you that are going to be a part of this great resignation, you're still thinking about it. You're going, I want to ride this wave you got to check out my friends at ZipRecruiter. Thousands and thousands of you are because you're going, wait a second, Ken said it was free. Yes, ZipRecruiter, the number one hiring site in the United States, is free to you. The companies, by the way, that are looking for you, they're paying Zip. So there's no catch here. I don't know why you wouldn't go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. In five minutes, you're going to have a profile, attach your resume, and then you hit go. And guess what? You can go have yourself a glass of lemonade or sun tea and stop applying anonymously to all these other websites where you hear nothing but crickets because ZipRecruiter is going to give you an update every time some company looks at your profile, likes your profile, and asks for your contact information. And the companies contact you directly. It's the easiest way, the best way to get hired. Did I mention it's free? It's free. It's a great strategy. Companies are dying to find talent. That's you. You're clear. You're ready. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken today. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. It's the best way to get hired. All right, folks. The clock moves so fast these days. That music starts and it tells me I got to get out of here. But remember this. You matter. You do have what it takes. Thank you for joining us. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Press on.